on this edition of Assembly Required. Can the X House be built? It's a first for the designers, the homeowners, and the builders. What the heck was that? I don't have any idea what to do. Is it too late to cancel my order? Find out if a bold experiment will pay off. I definitely think our neighbors are gonna be surprised. All next on Assembly Required. Pete and Lindsay Fabian have big dreams of building a new house for their budding family. Mama. They want it modern, they want it huge, and they won't compromise on taste. Good girl. One of the factors in designing a house that we'd always really loved and wanted to do was, was a flat roof. Very modern flair and modern design. Big master bedroom and a master bath with a whirlpool hot tub big windows, open spaces, and, and kind of an open floor plan. A deck that wraps around the house. Really high ceilings, so we have a lot of space. But nothing over the top. I mean, I'm a practical person. <laughs> but they're on a budget. Pete's thinking modular might be the answer. Lindsay thinks he may have gone off the deep end. When I first heard about modular, I definitely thought double wide. So who do they turn to? a trio of modernist architects. There's Mark, the front man. He brings in the business. Brian, a design wizard. And Paul, specialist in construction and materials. They call themselves Hive Modular, named after nature's modular wonder, the beehive. And they're committed to bringing modern to the masses. Modular construction is a way that you can do pretty much custom stuff, but still afford it. Modular is, uh, has a number of really tangible rules. And we like the challenges of doing good design with these budgetary rules and physical rules. It's kind of a ready-made thing that then a client can come in and buy a pre-designed home with subtle tweaks to, to, to kind of personalize it. Following in the footsteps of famous modern architects like Frank Lloyd Wright, the Hive guys are blending modern design with prefab construction. They've created two modular home designs that go for as little as 125 bucks a square foot, but they've never actually signed a client. One of their designs is the B-Line. B-Line stands for bar, like its basic shape. It's 16 feet wide, ideal for urban infill neighborhoods. Urban infill is a catch-all word for a lot of little slivers of space within a city that are kind of ripe for a new development. And C-Line is for cube. It starts with two modules side by side. So when Pete and Lindsay met with me, well, we've got a couple of different models. I'm showing them our C-Line and our B-Line. I think yeah. this is a little bit traditional for our taste at this point. Yeah, we don't like this. And there's things about either one of them that the, it just wasn't working for them. And I'm thinking, you're killing me. We've been sketching these things out over the last few months, trying to figure out where we want to go with this thing. I think we could take your plan. There's extra pressure to please their potential first clients. So instead of the B or C line, Mark decides to create a completely new line for the Fabians. It's experimental, so maybe we call it the X line. I like it. The X line will be a twist on elements from the B line and C line, with a little input from Pete thrown in for good measure. This is much closer, but it's not it's not there yet. Sure, I think we could probably I went into this whole process with Hive, knowing that I would be kind of meticulous and well aware of the fact that they at the end of this process they would probably really hate me. Before they sign on the dotted line, Lindsay needs to see modern modular in person. Time for a field trip. Here in the smoky shadow of a power plant sits a corrugated metal box. It's home to Hive Modular architect Paul Stanky. Hey guys. Hey Paul. Hey Paul. This is the prototype of Hive's beeline. Lindsay was a little skeptical. Yeah, I don't really like this siding. Well, I think he said something about having a bunch of options, so I think if we right. go with a stucco or more of the corrugated steel, we'll be set. It's a really interesting uh, experience to see Paul's house. It's its own thing on the outside, pretty modern, kind of industrial, but once inside, everybody's eyes light up. Now the test. Will Lindsay feel it? Oh, wow. So nice. Beautiful. 
I love the windows right away. Walking into it, it's beautiful. It's a fresh feeling. The light really comes in well. I liked all the clean lines. I love the openness. This is the area where the two boxes come together. This is so well done. This does not look at all modular. I know, it really looks seamless. The ceilings were very high. It was pretty much identical to what we were looking for on the interior. I was really sold on modular after touring Paul's house. Pete and Lindsay are ready to commit to a new life of prefab modern living. Coming up, Hive's first client plays armchair architect. We're coming up against a couple of hard deadlines. I did make some last minute changes. We had to I, I hold his hands back and say, you have to like it, it's gonna happen now. When assembly required continues. Where you choose to live can say a lot about you. For Hive Modular architect Mark Osmus, it speaks volumes. This is the abandoned power plant that I lived in in my late 20s. A roommate and myself built a small two-story house in a room right on the other side of that wall. He cannibalized the plant for parts. We got light fixtures like that. We use electrical panels like this for liquor cabinet. I think that's exactly where we got our stairs. We disassembled another run of that in the power plant. It's been a neat visual reference for me in the architectural work I've done since then, all the way up to the modular houses that we're doing now. The catwalks, massive windows, and the soaring spaces fueled Mark's creativity. And now he incorporates industrial elements in Hive's modern designs. Meanwhile, in the Fabian household, Pete and Lindsay are coming up with some design ideas of their own. We sketched a lot of designs. I think sometimes when we'd be out for dinner, we'd just take a little cocktail napkin and do the little box structures of the house. We came up with uh, a new plan. Uh-oh. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> we gotta figure out how to turn this into a modular house. I was worried that Pete would be driving them crazy because every once in a while we'd come with a laundry list of changes we wanted to the house. Pete and Lindsay made a lot of changes. I'd get emails pretty much every day from Pete for that whole time. We tried to accommodate him, but at the same time we were coming up against a couple of hard deadlines, which one was winter. Halfway through the process, I really realized that if I didn't have some confinements or some constraints, it would never get done. Once Pete was done making changes on his house and, and committed to it, you know, it was go time. We had to I, I hold his hands back and say, you have to like it, it's gonna happen now. The final 2,300 square foot, two level home design is in place. Right, up. And it's time for the Norse Modular Home Factory to get rolling. Working in tandem stations, their team of experts manufactures traditional modular homes with maximum efficiency. They frame the walls and roof in a jig to 1 16th of an inch tolerance, install drywall, insulation, and exterior siding. Their crew even takes care of the electric, plumbing, and heating all under one roof. Efficiency means lower cost. So the Hive architects teamed up with Norse to turn their blue-collar modern designs into ready-to-set modules. Finding a factory was probably the most critical part of the whole process. One that was willing to kind of take on something new and something that was a little bit different. The modern modular people come in and they want it to look boxy. It's not much of a stretch for us to do the modern looking thing with the flat roofs and the large windows and, and the boxy look because that's really what a modular is, is a box. Now that the Fabian's modules are in the final stage of construction. Let's do it. Brian and Paul pay Norse a visit for an inspection. When we went to go check on the Fabian house, All right. there were a couple concerns that we had regarding fit and finish. Details like that, that you know, can possibly get lost in the drawing. Basically, the biggest concern was the siding. We'll have another patch of siding that'll be the same detail, the same material and flashing as this one to make that mating seam. The verticals splitting the center of the window, so you guys nailed the details on that. That looks great. Paul and Brian can't wait to see how the clean lines match up on build day. After only two weeks, the six modules are sealed in plastic. Four trucks carry the prefab cargo. Time to roll. 
Pete and Lindsay's cutting edge new home is in pieces and heading to their one acre lot in a neighborhood of 70 style suburban homes. It really blows my mind to think that our entire house will all of a sudden be put together. We're just super excited and at the same time we're concerned that it happens correctly and everything comes out okay. There's no turning back now. 4 a.m. The trucks have come to rest on a quiet suburban street. In a few hours, these modules are going to fly. Next, the sounds of a modular home site where the 40-ton pieces don't fit. Going up. We're coming down. We're going up. Coming down. When assembly required continues. December 20th dawns gray and snowy. It's almost the shortest day of the year. It's cold. And the Hive Trio hopes there's enough time to set the Fabian's new home. The morning of the set, we got up extra early. We were very anxious, wanted to get out there to, to see what we were in for. We turned down our new street and bam, all the modules were completely blocking the entire road. Hello, hello. Is it too late to cancel my order? <laughs> Fired up! It's 7 a.m. and there's already a problem. The 120 ton crane didn't come with enough counterweights. It could tip when it picks up the biggest module, which weighs 35,000 pounds. This thing did not fly off the ground when it picks it up. So they're gonna have to solve that. They solve the problem by moving the boxes closer to the crane so it doesn't have to reach as far. Today, all eyes and ears are on foreman Tony Wojcik. I've been swinging houses for about six and a half, seven years. It's a game. It's just fun. It's 9.30. Time to play with blocks. The crane hoists box number one, 14,000 pounds of house, into the air. You wonder about cable fatigue. Is it gonna break? Is the box gonna crack in half? You can hear the thing creak when it's getting picked up. I stood under one and um, I feared for my life. The crew stabilizes the module with ropes. After a flight of 150 feet, the box comes to rest on the foundation, but it's not a pretty thing. Now we're gonna have a problem here. Yep, the way the house is setting at an angle, we're not dropping into place where we need to be. This corner may be aligned, but the far corner is hitting a beam on the foundation. Take two. They adjust the cables to start with a different corner. We're hovering around, you know, technically probably not supposed to be that close to the action. Just set her down. Dan, the contractor, he's hollering to the set crew and they're hollering back and kind of fighting over which way to cheat it. It's a little bit off right now. <laughs> It's a couple inches off, but I think they need to readjust it. Fire it over. Using crowbars, they cram the house onto the foundation. The house creaks and groans into position. Touchdown. One box in, five to go. 11 a.m., box two swings. It's coming. It's in the air. But it comes in for a rough landing. What the heck was that? Something's out of whack. I don't know what it is. The doorways refuse to line up. We're a quarter inch too far. You know, in a per perfect world, on paper, everything fits. But when you take put man involved there, it makes a difference. Everybody reads tape a different way. About an inch. Bring it back on half inch. Three quarters of an inch forward. I'm back with the shade, quarter inch. I settled for perfect and nothing less. <laughs> we got to move it 20 times, we move it 20 times. And for every adjustment, it's another bounce of the box. Coming down! Going up! Coming down! Coming down. Forward, we're going up. Going up! Coming down! Coming down! You can pick one of these things five or six times and set it down the exact same spot and it fits different every time. But no matter what they do, box two doesn't want to cooperate. I'm a little surprised at the fact that things aren't fitting that well. It means walls get ripped up inside a little bit, so it's just a little more work. It's going to be a long day. Coming up, Hive's X-Line continues to surprise. We'll see if it works. It's never been tried before. 
and someone dropped the ball. They didn't look at the drawings for this. Who the heck did that? The day is aging quickly on this modular home site. The clock's rolling on the crane, you know, it's costing money. Over $300 an hour for the crane alone, not even counting overtime for the crew. Before flying box three, they install an LVL beam over the garage. It's an unusual arrangement for a modular home. We'll see if it works, it's never been tried before. Even Paul pitches in. You like that, all right. How many architects does it take to set a beam? <laughs> the beam's set, and they're ready for box three. A massive 60-foot-long module, 35,000 pounds. Up, up, and away. Good. Perfect landing. The pace is picking up, and moods are improving. As box four lands safe and sound. It's only one o'clock. I guess we're not doing so bad. Got two more boxes to set. Module five launches and hovers 50 feet above the ground. You tall enough for you? <laughs> Thing is way up in the sky. I just hope it fits. Please fit. It fits, but there's a problem. The vertical flashing doesn't line up. Brian takes a frustrated dig at the factory. They didn't look at the drawings uh, for this, so Paul and I were just scheming a way to uh, deal with the mending seam between the second floor and the roof box to correct the problem. Kind of uh, frustrating to see how you plan this hard. They're drawn, they're aligned on the drawings, and inevitably something doesn't carry through. A quick solution is not apparent. I don't have any idea what to do. It's a huge letdown for the architects. But Pete and Lindsay can't think about siding right now. They're too busy imagining what they'll do in their new home. Throw a party. That's the first thing I want to do with a big kitchen, a big great room. Now well, my husband can sleep at night. Stress turned into like super excitement. So at this point, totally relieved. 3 p.m. Box six is ready to go. Last one. Yep, this is the last one. We've been waiting for this one all day. Rock and roll. This last one is really in the stratosphere, flying over the trees. It approaches the building and settles in. <laughs> 4 p.m. and there's a new modern house in the neighborhood. Now I'm gonna go hug the house. But is everyone so in love with it? I definitely think our neighbors are going to be surprised. Well, it'll be interesting to see what it looks like when it's finished. Right now, it looks like a box. A few boxes put together. <laughs> but in the coming weeks, these boxes will start to look more like a finished house. The crew will bolt the walls in place, winch the upper and lower modules together, sheetrock the seams, and fix the factory errors for a house in a day. But for now, it's time for a toast. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 House in a day. We started out this morning with a bunch of houses all set out in the trailer, and at the end of the day, you can look at that. But that's the part I like about the job. Everyone's exhausted, it's cold, it's, uh, the sun's going down, but the house is done. And we're able to walk around it and see it for the first time. There's a great sense of accomplishment. We're not just playing around anymore. This is this is a real deal. Pete and Lindsay's idea seemed like pie in the sky, but five months later, the Fabians are moved in to their creation. We love it. We love the big windows, waking up to the sunshine with the view out the back. The fact that this thing came together as a modular house, um, my wife and I are both extremely happy with it. I think it's been an adjustment for the neighbors. People drive by slowly staring at the house. They're starting to get used to the idea of having this modular home here because we're not going anywhere. 